Good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen. Since Wednesday, the 21st of August 2013, several rumors are circulating, report that the Syrian army used poison gas on settlements in the region of Ghouta near Damascus. The newspaper El Arabia reported, relying on the Syrian opposition leader George Sabra, that at least 1,300 people had been killed by poison gas attacks. The paper claims that President Bashar al-Assad himself is responsible for those attacks. During the past days, the Western media picked up and spread these reports almost in unison. The following day, the British Daily Mirror headlined, Now they are gassing children. The pictures of dead infants should substantiate the alleged cruel facts. In the light of such emotional reporting, it is once more essential to look at the facts and go to the bottom of the statements. First, it should be noted that up until now, there is no substantial evidence for the massive accusation against Assad. They are merely allegations of opposition rebels. So, we can only speculate. The Western media and politicians who claim that these statements were reliable are on very thin ice. Employees of the news agency Anna News, who were present in the region of East Ghouta at that time, depict a quite different view of the situation there. They report, By the end of last year, the place has been occupied by light forces of the Al-Nasra Front. Due to ongoing combat, the area has long since been abandoned by civilians. Currently, there are only rebel fighters there, but no civilians at all. No women, let alone children, can be found there, whose corpses are then presented to us by the Western media. There are no units of the Free Syrian Army present there, but only international terrorists of foreign Al-Qaeda units, as well as professional foreign mercenaries that were trained by U.S. American instructors based in Jordan. The journalists report that anti-terror operation took place on August the 21st in this location. They testify about it. With dozens of cameras working with various camera angles, we documented the entire progress of the operation without interruption. Looking at the explosion images, any expert can easily recognize the fact that the army is launching nothing but standard ammunition. There is no crawling smoke whatsoever. Considering the windy weather, the conditions of the close combat and the soldiers themselves not wearing any gas masks, the soldiers and the journalists filming at the front themselves would have been severely affected by the effects of chemical warfare agents. There is nothing like that at all. This proves once more the fact that the campaign about chemical weapons operations of the Syrian army is a lie. The geopolitical analyst Patrick Henningsen raises the question of who benefits from such an alleged poison gas attack. He reminds us that only a few days before, UN weapons inspectors arrived in Syria and moved into a hotel close to the alleged site of the crime. Had Bashar al-Assad in fact used chemical weapons with these inspectors still nearby, one would have to consider him to be an absolute fool. The US and their partners are not growing wary of pointing to the Traspist Red Line, which they had conjured up for the first time in 2012. This would be transgressed once chemical weapons would be used in Syria. A military invention by the US and their partners would then inevitably follow. This warning puts the events of the last week in a very different light. Bear in mind the fact we are still talking about unconfirmed accusations stemming from the Syrian rebels. Relying solely on their statements is more than negligent. There are no proofs at all for these accusations. In spite of all these facts, the U.S. Foreign Secretary of State declared on Sunday the 25th of August that the U.S. Army forces are basically pre prepared for an intervention and are only waiting for Obama's decision. The Russian politician Alexei Pushkov stated, President Obama moves inescapably towards a war in Syria just as Bush did in Iraq before. And he went on to add, Just as the war in Iraq was not rightful, so this war will not be justified either, and Obama will become a clone of Bush. Dear viewers, it has become obvious to all of us, all these events do not concern Syria alone. It is apparent that it may culminate in a confrontation between the two great world powers. 
On the one hand, the Americans, the French, the British, Israel and their allies, who do not fight against Syria alone, but by doing that, they fight against Russia, China and Iran as well. How these nations are going to react is quite clear. But one thing is for certain. What the Syrian Minister of Information had predicted before. A US military intervention would of course have very serious aftermath and would cause a fireball that would set ablaze the entire Middle East. Dear viewers, please take care, together with us, to make these facts public, if possible, before the first American missile hits Syrian ground and kills people. Please try to draw the attention of as many people as possible to these circumstances. Please watch also our media commentary from Friday the 23rd of August that was aired in German, which reveals the context from this point of view. We're looking forward to welcoming you again soon.